Welcome back to Nightcap Chat, the pop culture podcast. Talk all things comic books, video games, movies, TV shows, and more. Today we are finishing our top 10 superhero list with numbers 5 through 1. I'm Blade O'Neill. I'm Ken Brown. I'm um, Lexi. And I am glad that we decided to split this into two episodes preemptively because this list is taking a long time. <laughs> <laughs> But I guess we all read yeah, a lot of probably, comic books, right? Yes. Yeah, we could probably do like half hour, hour episodes just on each character mm-hmm. of each each one of our picks. Yeah, I was I was trying not to be too long winded on every single one, just because of how long I was thinking. But yes, you're you're absolutely correct. I mean, if you, if you guys go back and probably read through it, my my contributions to this episode is probably like five minutes <laughs> your guys contributions probably a lot longer than you that. think so <laughs> yeah i like say like two seconds about my character i'm like there you, you guys go well have it's at fine it. have at it Lance. no i'm have at it. no no it's okay i don't want to have at it it's gonna be great <laughs> i don't need to explain why my character is where it is okay? <laughs> you guys have to deal with it <laughs> that's true so this this is the most exciting part of the list because this is one through five. Like these are the these are the top picks right here. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm second guessing my picks right now. <laughs> I've been I've been second guessing everything this whole time, but this is this is what I made and I'm sticking to it. I am a little sad Silver Surfer is not on my list now that we've kind of talked about it, but I'm still okay um, with my list. So. I believe I'm next in the order of here, so I'll just go yeah. ahead and jump into it. Number five. Number five. I have this first appearance, and not because of this character, but it kind of became a happy coincidence, and I would have obtained this issue for this character anyway. Aha! What am I saying here? Oh, but I have, you know action figures statues she's just she's just too cool you know and i i got to know this character because of other characters and she's really grown on me through the years and is now in my number five spot spit it out domino (laughs) Uh, what do you mean ah no, you're just you're just upset because her powers are like Black Cat. Yeah, it's a ripoff character. Yeah. No way. <laughs> yeah. Well, Domino was first. Mm, oh no. no, actually, no, that's not no. true. Well, Domino's cool. <laughs> I love Domino. Domino's a, a really cool character. I think she's still underutilized, uh, which is cool, you know. And I and I really look forward to an MCU interpretation of the character. Um, and she's she her first appearance isn't her, actually her. See that's that's so that's yeah, yeah that's I'm I'm so glad you brought it up because I, I I wanted to say that. So of course what that's referring to is her first appearance, quote unquote, is actually the same as Deadpool in New Mutants ninety eight, well, along with a character called Gideon that nobody cares about. <laughs> I was going to say, I thought that was Prince of Gideon. Big thing about that book, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> um, but the thing is, is Domino is not Domino. It's actually Copycat disguised as Domino, but Domino hadn't existed as a character before that. So you haven't heard of Domino until New Mutants 98, but it turns out to be Copycat the whole time. So the first appearance of Domino, she's not actually Domino until a few episodes later when you realize that the Domino you thought was Domino was actually Copycat. Yeah. Let's okay. Ten times real fast. Yeah, I, I did my so best. It's not, it's not a first appearance. It is and it isn't. So nope. it's really up to interpretation because it's her well, first. Then you have to get both. So here it is. It's her first acknowledgement of existence. True. So you technically have four first appearances in that book, then rather than three. No, because Copycat existed, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Because oh. Copycat and Domino count as two. 
Yeah, I was trying to think if Copycat was before that, but if that's the first appearance of Deadpool, all the early issues with Copycat. No, yeah, you're interesting, Ken. Yeah, maybe. I don't think Copycat appeared before that reveal. I don't think so either. Interesting. I never thought about it like that. Yeah, Yeah, indirect. Fourth appearance. First appearance, uh... Also, or, or or the concept of a character, yeah, which is crazy. So and, so it and on the, it works both ways too. So when Domino Copycat's revealed as Domino, does she revert to her natural form again? In that issue where Domino shows up, that's so that's that's later. I want to say yes. I'm I honestly like so, I I can't picture off the top of my head because her she's very similar to Mystique, but it's a little different. Yeah. She has to be so like near the people. So technically, you have a character that makes two first appearances twice. Yeah, yeah, and that's how weird it is. Because <laughs> yeah, Domino makes a first appearance as Copycat, yeah. but then Domino shows up for her first appearance, real Domino. But then Copycat shows up as her natural Copycat. Yeah, and I don't know when they or actually the find Redom- uh, the real Domino. I have to go through. I, I'm pretty sure I have it because, like, there's a bunch of I have a bunch of New Mutants and ex, old uh, X Force books, and you know, of course, I have Domino. They have those like mini series that talk about her origin. You know, when they were like doing the stuff, and they like they were tattooing because um, you know she has like that black that black eye. You know, is it X Force like, number is it X Force number twelve or something like that? The first appearance of Domino, the real Domino. You know, I, I uh, what you know, I should have I should have done the research, but I wasn't expecting that question. And honestly, I have no idea. I was just thinking about New Mutants ninety eight, and I didn't really get past that that thought process. Yeah, um, yeah I have to look, but I'm I'm like ninety five percent sure I have it. But I definitely have New Mutants ninety eight, <laughs> which is which is the the one to have regardless of yes. of why you're collecting it. Actually, I have a I have more than one copy of that. It's X Force number nineteen. I guess it's number nineteen is the 19. first copy cap. Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure I have that too because there's, there's a lot of early Deadpool um, within those early X Force as well. Yes. Even even more ironic too is that Greg Capullo did the artwork on that book. Yeah. Yes, you are absolutely correct. And when we when we interviewed him on on Comic Fan Network. I was I was sure to bring up you know because he did he did some early X Force stuff and and even Quasar and I think a lot of people don't talk about that, um, but I mean those were some of his first books within the the comic book industry. Yeah, pretty crazy. It's mm-hmm. like that uh, lost lost uh, lost issues for Greg Capullo fans. Yeah, and I, and I love that stuff. Like I I love all those X Force books. Like those are those are great. Those are some of my favorites. Um, so, Ken, what, yeah. what you got for number five? Yeah, this was like going back and forth debating because I really love the concept of this character. And uh, I kind of, once again, think he's underutilized all too, but he's kind of, he's so passive in his storytelling hmm. that um, you can't do a whole lot with him because he is more or less the voice of reason among the X-Men. And, and I think that's Nightcrawler. And uh, oh, Nightcrawler, a character that I feel like Stan Lee created all his Marvel characters with a message, right? Don't you think? Like, can't you agree with that with me on yeah, that? Yeah. That a lot of, like, you know, the Fantastic Four, the message of science, be careful with science, you know, uh, Peter Parker, the message of, once again, anti bullying, you know, almost way with Flash Tom, um, with, uh, the X-Men, more or less, even the most with the X-Men, is that uh, racial injustice was yeah. what, more or less, I think Stan Lee was hitting on the most yeah. with the X-Men, with uh, um, their king and that uh, social justice for all. The mm-hmm. X-Men were the de- definition of that. Yeah. You know, it's like that the X-Men were all Caucasian original characters that could hide in society but they were hated 
for no other reason other than they had abilities that no other human could have, and there was fear that they might overthrow the world. Yeah. And uh, Stanley hit that on nails with that. And I feel Chris Claremont developed Nightcrawler to pay homage to how important Stanley's message was. The man oh. looked like a demon, but he was a Catholic priest. Yeah. Yep. And he was a and yep. he was always a matter, you know, he was persecuted more than probably any other mutant. How he looked as well as having scary powers. You yep. know, he looked like a demon. He left brimstone everywhere he teleported to that smelled horrible. Um mm-hmm. he was like always, sulfur, right? Which is yeah. really what they associate with the, the smell of demons. Yes. And he was telling a message with that character is we need to get to know the person, break the stereotype of what you think a person is just by the way they look. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I feel mm-hmm. Chris Claremont took Nightcrawler to a whole new and, and I really think that is a very good nod to what Stan Lee was trying to do with the concept of the X and having a great balance of reason in this war that where Professor X is obviously the front of this war, but mm-hmm. Nightcrawler was the one that kept the balance of, war, wow. of trying to make sure that break down these stereotypes. There's no need for them. We're here. We can live together. We can work together. Don't do this anymore. Mm-hmm. And and I really feel like Nightcrawler is a very underutilized not appreciated character that's why i made number five on my that's that's cool you know and you know like i've obviously if you look at my list um especially so far like i i like a lot of the x-men characters x-force and and whatever and and i always thought nightcrawler was cool and i was i was always surprised that like even for the fox movies that they that they stayed very true um, to, to his character, like especially with the way Hollywood is, you know, mm-hmm. I, I would almost feel like they they wouldn't do that, almost like they would be afraid of something. But I was always really impressed with the way they handled Nightcrawler within X Men Two. Um, the Nightcrawler is a cool character; he's a fun character. I mean, you know, even as a kid, I mean, like you wouldn't think it'd be cool to like go teleport, you know, over yeah. over there, you know. And he was always the shoulder to, you know, to deal with Wolverine stress. He helped with Kitty Pride. Mm-hmm. He was, uh, you know, he was able to help associate with Colossus when Colossus was dealing. He was, he literally was the X Man that other X Men could go to confession with. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. it's just like he was, he was a character that was thought out. I think that Chris Claremont. I, I don't know. I'd have to ask Claremont. Uh, you know what? How Nightcrawler ranks on his characters of creation, mm-hmm. like development-wise. Because you know, Len Wing, you know, he created the character with Dave Cockrum, but Chris Claremont completely fleshed out Nightcrawler as a character as a whole for other people to take and do fun stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I love, I love the X Men um, stuff, especially, especially Chris Claremont stories. Like you, you can't go wrong with that. Um, you know, and this is, this is Mystique's son, right? This is, this is Rogue's brother, you know, it's, um. He's the son of a demon. mm -hmm. And he, so, you know, totally bucked that trend too. It's like, hey, I'm going to bring people to God, you know, the enemy of my father, not because he hates his father. He, you know, he sees the good in everything. Yeah. And that's, and that's really neat. Um. I I really look forward, I, and I'm going to probably keep saying this about a lot of characters who haven't been in the MCU yet, yet. Um, but it's it's going to be really fun to to see these get interpreted to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, <clears throat> Lance? I literally, as you're speaking, I just switched my five and my four. Wow. What a twist. So, what a twist. What a little twist. Is it my <laughs> <Nightcrawler? laughs> Yes. No. Is it? No, I did consider Nightcrawler, but then I was like, hey. no, not that there's anything wrong with him, it's just he's wasn't making my top ten for me. Um number five, he's a king. Black Bolt. I I thought so. Nice. He said king. I, I, I had mean, to give him my I, I had to give him the honorable honorable mention, you know, because yeah, he's cool. He was he was the honorable well actually he's one of the honorable mentions. 
Um, yeah, I mean, what, what else, what's cooler than Black Bolt, you know? His whispers locked out mountains. Dude can just fight. He doesn't even have to talk. He can still fight. Like, doesn't even have to open his mouth. He can. He went toe to toe with, uh, who is it? Like Icarus the Eternal or whatever, and he beat him up just with hand to hand combat. And I mean, he fought Thanos, and that was an awesome fight. He fought Galactus. I mean, it was kind of cool for a second, but he lost that fight and he died. But. Married to Medusa. It was even Married cooler. to Medusa. Yeah. Um, it's kind. Of, I, I like the the you know mystique behind the character of like he can't talk kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. I always pictured it as something you know. I think it's it could be well done on on, on the big screen. Um, Not know, the small screen. The uh-huh. of, um, and uh, yeah, it's just a cool character. He's a king. Love that. You know, he's part of his. He has his people to look out for, almost like a Thor type thing. You know, is his own his own like race and almost planet. You know, when they well when they were on the moon and everything. But um, but yeah, just black Bolt. He's cool. Love him. Who you got for number four, Blade? Before I before I jump into number four, I love Black Bolt, and I just want to say, like, man, yes, Black Bolt is cool. The Inhumans are cool. That that stupid TV show did not do them justice, and my goodness, I hope because Ken, you were with me, San Diego Comic Con. It was either 2011 or 2012, and and the rumors were that they were going to announce an Inhumans movie. Like I don't I don't know if you remember. Yes. And we were digging through comic book bins, man, and I I found uh, Fantastic Four. Oh man, the number is like escaping 46? me. Forty six. Forty six. Was that um, the first black hole, right? Was forty six first black hole? I. That That's, sounds right. I can I can go in the next room. That. It's it's in the it's in the forties. It's in the thirties or forties for sure. Uh, but I found it. I got a I got a really good deal on that book. Like, I think I paid not much more than forty bucks for it. Dude, that's awesome. Um. I, I want to say you picked up a first Rocket Raccoon, like a, it was a Hulk issue. Yeah, Hulk two seventy one. I want to say you picked one of those up for a good deal while we were digging through these yes. bins because I think there was a Guardians of the Galaxy announcement that we were anticipating that day too. Yes, um, we just and, went straight to the back issues just to go. Okay, we got to get these now before. Well, well <laughs> dude, and those both of those rumors panned out because they, if I'm not mistaken, they announced. Inhumans and Guardians of the Galaxy, but Inhumans, unfortunately, later got relegated to just a TV show. Did you find the Inhumans number? Yeah, Lance? it's forty-five and forty-six. Forty-five and forty-six. Yeah. So I do have that. I did get a smoking deal on it. Um, I have both of those too. Unfortunately, it didn't go anywhere, but I hope that changes. I also got first yes. Prince Rocket Raccoon. I got it at uh, um, Bookman's. Nice. nice. Wow! For so 50, what, fifty cents or a dollar? Fifty. I was gonna say that that's at least a dollar. That's yeah. Awesome. Wow. Wow. Talk yeah, about uh, and Zia. Sometimes you have some of the hidden gems in there that just people just trade in because they just don't know. Yeah. Not so much lately, though. It, yeah. It's kind of. That's they, kind of they're more on top of it now. I think they realized what yeah. they were doing, and they they started monopolizing a little more. It's it's a lot harder to find uh, gems in there. I don't know how many times I've, I, I only came here, you know, every time I visited, we'd go there and I would buy so many first appearances. From yeah. Me. Anyway, I digress. Blade. Okay. Number where four. are we at? It's me. It's four. me. Number yeah. four. Okay. Give me a second while I open up my list again. Cause I don't know. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Great. You know, it's yes. funny. He, he, he has to open up a list on his phone. He has, at least two or three computer screens in front of him that he could have just have his list up. Probably. <laughs> yes. You have to wait for him to open up his phone. Yep. And I, I have a web browser, you know, specifically for looking up things and I, I should have planned this better, uh, but I didn't. It's, it's funny because I'm working off a piece of paper like I'm doing some kind of like <laughs> baseball draft. Going, okay, let me cross this off a little bit. That have, problem? Like, my draft board. Here it's like okay, I got my guys, my total list. So I got to move over to my draft board. Kind of cracks me up. But that's probably better because like you don't have to unlock your piece of paper. Like I have to open up my phone and, and pull up my oh, list. Dude, 
I should take a picture of this paper and send it to you. It just cracks me up. It's got scribbles all over. I can't now because I'll spoil the list. But all right. All right. It's kind of funny to, you know, just kind of see like, okay, cross that off. Okay, let me start that off now. I got little like here. It's almost like I'm back at school at study hall right now. Pretty when fun. it's done, I would actually, I would love to see that list because maybe we can use that on the <laughs> on the Instagram post because I think that's really fun. Yes. Um, so my number four, and like this, this is where it got hard for me. Like one through five, I had to figure out the order. Um, so I'm, I'm surprised this fell where it did, but it made sense to me. Now, this is a character I got into because of another character. And I realized how powerful this character was. And he's just such a powerful psychic character. And like, he'll fight the X-Men. It doesn't matter. Like he's, he's going to do what needs to be done, you know, and that's, and that's it, you know, um, I think he's underrated and I'll, I'll tell you why in just a second that I, and I know I've already talked about this probably even more than once on my cap chat, but my number four pick is cable. Nice. Yep. Yeah. Um, I have his first appearance, uh, new mutants, uh, 86. 87. 87. Oh yeah, you got last page 86, you're right, because it's on okay. last page of 86. Last page of 86, full, full appearance 87, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't want to go in the next room, but I have them both. I even have the the gold, the gold second printing variant. You know how like the first appearance of Cable, like it's red, but then you find the, yes. the gold ones too. You always find those in dollar bins and like, I, I don't know, I can't help, but it's such a similar cover. Um, Cable's really cool. He's really powerful. What really drew me in to the character was there was a Cable Deadpool series in the, um, what was it? Like 2000, 2000, I want to say three, four, or five, I want to say, Cable Deadpool series. Yeah. And in the yes. first few issues, um, they're both going after the same thing, but they want the opposite things to happen with that thing. And they, they cross paths and, you know, Cable's just getting annoyed that Deadpool is going to get in his way. And he uses his psychic power and he just blows his brains out the back of his head. And Deadpool dies and Cable moves on. <laughs> and I think he does that like twice. Like that's how powerful it is. Like Cable can just blow your brains out with his mind. And, you know, that's, that's it. But he was doing it to Deadpool because he knew he can regenerate. And then those same issues, of course, we have the very famous lines where they're fighting about whatever and you know Deadpool rips off his mask and he says you know something along the lines of how would you like it if you looked like a mix of Ryan Reynolds and a and a Sharpe you know it was the first <laughs> the first time we had Ryan Reynolds associated with Deadpool and that was before even the movies you know um but but Cable's powerful you know like in his early X-Force appearances he even said you know like what we're doing, you know, we might have to fight the X-Men and you have to be okay with that. You know, like Cable's, Cable's in it to win it. Yeah. You know, this is a, he's, he turned it into a war again. Like he was from the future. He, mm -hmm. he knew what was coming and what needed to be done. And almost like what they're doing with House of X and Powers of X right now. Yeah. Almost like that, you know, Cable was the forefather, like saying something's got to be done besides what Professor X is doing. Mm -hmm. We got to build on that. From the future. <laughs> and also, like, what a great job Josh Brolin did with Cable. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh gosh, my goodness. 100%. What an incredible I mean, not, actor. Not for nothing, he should wait, He should have won an award for just both playing both those roles, like, as Thanos and Cable, like, amazingly. How many people could play Thanos and Cable and do a great job? Yeah, not many. He's How many people? Man. And he was up for the role of Batman, and when he didn't get it, and Ben Affleck got it, I was really mad. How many people could play Batman and Cable and Thanos and do a good job? Because he would have yeah. done a. Don't even fight with me. He would have done a great job as Batman. I don't even care. He would have been a great Batman. Oh, absolutely. Tell me I'm wrong. And Josh Brolin, he's he's a pure actor. I mean, he's a guy that can do multifaceted roles. You don't even know it's the same actor way of saying it you, yep. you know what i mean it's like that like you like i saw no sentiment of cable inside of thanos yeah and that's just what made it even funnier that, that that did pulls what i don't even remember what he said about thanos it was yeah i don't it remember it was either, so funny it was 
Um, what an incredible actor. Th- Josh Brolin was already Thanos in the MCU, but he was purple. So I would argue, I don't think it would bother me if he was just Cable in yeah, the MCU. Yeah. Why That's not? Awesome. Why not? Um, yeah. We'll see what happens. Absolutely incredible. My goodness. Um, let's see. Where are we at now? So Ken is next with his number four. Yeah, number four, dude. This this is the one where I kind of creating chaos for myself. Yes, this is so exciting. <laughs> yeah, because I, I kind of, this such a cop-out. I went with ninjas as a genre because all the characters I was trying to decide on were all ninjas at one point during their storytelling. Okay. Daredevil, Wolverine, Snake Eyes, and Deathstroke. Okay. And, oh, I wasn't not a single. I, I didn't even think of that. Okay. I was. I. I, I had a feeling Snake Eyes was involved I, with that. Yeah. My my brain immediately went to Electra for some reason. Yeah, oh. and Electra too. She fits in that too as well. But like ninjas to me, like ever since I was a. Uh, you know, saw Storm Shadow for the first time and Snake Eyes and I'm going like, these guys are freaking awesome. I started reading like, wow, dude, Daredevil's a ninja too. Wolverine's got ninja training. Deathstroke's got ninja yeah, training. Yeah. It's like, these guys are, you know, is it is, is, it, is the reason why I like them because they're ninjas? And do you know, is it just like the Japanese code of honor and just, do you know, they're, they're great soldiers. It's just everything about ninjas are awesome. You know, their weapons assessor of sex accessories, like mm-hmm. swords, throwing stars, nunchucks. Do you know what I mean? Just more or less moving around silently that you can't even hear them. And they just, they like, they can take a part and you wouldn't even know they were there. Mm-hmm. And it's just, ninjas are freaking awesome. So I kind of switched over a bunch of characters that I liked into the ninja character, ninja category as, you know, some of my favorite heroes are ninjas. Mm-hmm. So I know it's kind of a cop out and weird way of thinking about it, but I like it. Just yeah, that's good. That's fair. I I don't know if I can argue with that. Um, especially Wolverine. Wolverine was on my list, and I was I was really interested to see which characters, you know, were on all of our lists or on more than one list, because uh, I I suspect for the most part it was it was going to be pretty different. You think about this guy's a blind attorney and he's a ninja still. So not only yeah. does, do you know what I mean? Obviously he's got the supernatural abilities from the, the toxic waste spill, but just owning every single skill needed to protect hell's kitchen. Mm-hmm. I mean, cause daredevil was my first time. Then I said, God, I want to fit snake eyes on this fit Wolverine on this. Oh, Deathstroke in that category too as well. And I yeah. like Deathstroke. And Deadpool too is a, you know technically a ninja too, isn't he? In a weird way of saying that. I I mean would, I can like, could, could I can qualify Deadpool with a ninja training. I I'd say to an extent. I mean he was technically you know military, but I mean with the whole thing with the swords and being a ripoff of Deathstroke, that's that's a yeah. hard point to argue. I would say. Yeah, just it's like that. Uh, so I kind of grouped them all together with uh, superhero ninjas. Yeah. Yeah, I I will say you know especially um, with the the Netflix um, Daredevil show with Charlie Cox, it, it made it hard not to even just briefly consider Daredevil for me because mm-hmm. I mean Such like a Daredevil's a cool character. He's he's really fun to watch. Uh, team up with Spider Man and such, yes. and, and fight Kingpin and Charlie Cox does such a good job. And quite frankly, um, the Daredevil stuff is some of my favorite. MCU stuff ever. It was just so well done between so between Charlie Cox as Daredevil and Vincent D'Onofrio as Kingpin. It was just, it was just great, you know. And I yeah. and I really hope both of those characters can resume their roles because, well, gosh, this this episode is coming out December first. So at the point this is airing, the rights to Daredevil have now reverted back to Marvel. So this is no longer tied up at Netflix. So it's going to be really interesting to see if there's been any announcements um, within the last couple of days of recording this. Versus, I hope that Charlie Cox stays. Yes, I hope so too. 
Yeah. Because the same with John Barenthal being in Punisher. I mean, yep. some people just were perfect for the roles. So mm-hmm. Charlie Cox and John Barenthal, those two roles yep. of Daredevil and Punisher. It's okay, but if there's an announcement, big announcement by Daredevil, you just edit what you're thinking. <laughs> I'll, I'll edit it back into the beginning. Yeah. Just edit it into right now. <laughs> we're going to do it right yeah. now. We're going to. We're gonna change the course of time. Um, so my number four, Lance's number four. That was my number five until a minute ago. So mine is it's almost I'm almost taking a book a uh, page out of Ken's book. Okay, you know, like how the whole like a specific time period for a character, like you know, Old Man Logan, you know, Venom, but it's like Spider Man in that costume, you know. Okay. Uh, mine is. Ms. Marvel. I'm talking about the original Carol Danvers, Ms. Marvel. Yes. Ms. So Marvel, whole... Carol Danvers. Carol Danvers, yes. Ms. Marvel. Okay. Yes. None of that new nonsense, right? Um, love the character. The whole, the whole relationship between her and Marvel. Her and Rogue. Her and the Binary and the Brood. There's just so much good content and storyline. And then her is Warbird, and she had a little relationship with Tony Stark for a little bit. Um, and she's they've developed her character to become so much more powerful. Um, I'm not a huge fan of all the newer stuff for her as Captain Marvel. Um, but I, did, I just, I've always liked the character. I have like 15 of her first appearances. And every single Ms. Marvel comic multiple times. Um, yeah, she's a fun character. Love her. Wow. Super cool character. Very cool. I was not expecting Ms. Marvel to make your list. Really? Yeah. I don't know why. That's just interesting. She's cool. She's I love her. I'm not, she's awesome. I'm not do you feel the do you feel the binary Ms. Marvel's a little bit underappreciated? Um, because I like binary too a lot, and I think that's very underappreciated. I I always thought it was kind of weird. Yeah, because it's like the Phoenix Force. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. It's kind of cool for super leveling her up to a whole level, which I thought was kind of cool. But now she's just like super strong anyway, but has like control of her binary, which I guess makes sense. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's kind of crazy that right. She's the one that gave Rogue. Her ability, um, her abilities, like she's so Super powerful, she gave and, and another. Like, you, she, you know, she held on too long. Right. Yeah. So that was number four, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So this is my number three, and this this is the fun. The top three, the top three is the most fun, right? So, my number three, I was having a really hard time. My one, two, and three were really hard. Agreed. So this character, I I really wanted to be my number one. But because of one and two, I was just kind of thinking in terms of all time, and I just couldn't do it. But I just want to say, as far as right now goes, this is probably my number one right now just personally as far as like what I'm trying to collect and and all that um, I'll just leave it at that so my number three is the very very underrated dazzler Ooh, that's interesting very cool yes um, my disco queen my goodness I mean She's cool in this universe. She's cool in the Ultimate Universe. Um, she, I mean, she was a character that they were going to develop movies around, you know? I mean, we have Dazzler the movie, the graphic novel. It's not a movie. It's a graphic novel called Dazzler the movie, for those of you who don't know. And they thought that they thought they could do something here with this this character, this this woman who could sing, you know? and like she was going to be the star of this movie, right? But she's an X-Men and she first appeared in the Dark Phoenix saga, you know, which of course was created by Chris Claremont. 
Like they were, they were going to put a lot of chips behind her, but they, they didn't do it. They didn't do it. And I'm almost glad they didn't, you know, it's just so they didn't relegate her to this, to this big fail that probably would have inevitably happened uh, during this time period. Oh yeah. But I think now is the time, you know, let's, let's make her an X-Men. Let's have her appear in a proper dark Phoenix movie. And you know what? (laughs) Give me a break. That was, that was the best part of that movie. I don't even know if you mentioned it. That might be the most comic book (laughs) accurate looking character that they did in the Fox movies that that anyone has ever, like any Marvel, like it looked like straight out of the comic. Well, I wouldn't say more than like Iron Man or something, but it, it was cool. But, I'll tell you what, there was rumors that it was going to be like Taylor Swift or something, and I hate Taylor Swift. So, I mean, if if that happened, you never would have even got that episode. I would have boycotted the whole movie. You know, don't don't get me wrong. Um, but, I mean, I, I love Dazzler. I have several of her first appearances. I have her first appearance in uh, the Pence variant, the, the UK currency. Oh, yeah. Um, my first experience of her, I think, was in... Uh, in uh, the Joe Kelly run of Deadpool, of course he wasn't writing the Deadpool run at that time. At Gilson, yeah, yep. Yep. Um, yep. Deadpool, the roller skates. Yep. Deadpool's falling all over the place, mm-hmm. trying to like, almost like keep up with Dazzler. Dazzler yep. was just like owning the cover with Deadpool on it, which was kind of cool. I th- I think that Very was one weird. of my first uh, comics with Dazzler, if I'm not if not my first. Um, but she's a cool character. She's underrated. Um, I think I have all of our action figures, which is not saying much because I think there's only three, but I have them. <laughs> um, I I love Dazzler. She's a cool character. Completely underrated. Yeah. Can't wait to see more of her in the MCU. I, I will keep saying that. Uh, all right. I'm really excited to see what you guys have for three, two, and one here. This is, this is going to be fun. Yeah, once again, confliction again on number three. It's like, uh, I still conf- my 3A and 3B. Let's see. Um, oh, Ken's making up numbers now. <laughs> no, no, dude. Is that horrible? It's like, so I'll have to stick with, you know, even though I want to have this on my list, I'm going to stick with my initial number three I had on there, which is, once again, it's a little bit of a cheat, but Batman Family, because I wanted to put Batgirl on this list really bad. Mm. And I kind of put her in with Batman family because it's Batman I had on the list, but every, if I had Batgirl and Batman on this list, I feel like it's incarnations of the same thought. Do you know what I mean? Okay. And so I just think that the Batman family is by far one of the most, how would you say it? Um, man, dude, I don't know. Intriguing group of characters in DC. Do you know what I mean? It's like that. I grew up a Marvel fan than a DC fan for all due respect to all the DC fans out there. Yeah. But Batman and his characters was to me felt like I, I can put it in a Marvel story tell and it would work for me. Yeah. It was, you know, it's it's it seems like it's more grounded in a type of reality that's Marvel reality where Gotham City is a lot like New York City. It's just, you know, Hell's Kitchen is us to me gotham city yeah um you know like hell's kitchen's like maybe it's, i know hell's kitchen's a real place in new york plus part of new york that's kind of like the cd part from what i understand it used, um, used to be yes and now it's kind of like re refurbished so that's why i think like gotham city is like a much larger scale more like new york city to me and then you know crime alleys more or less Hell's Kitchen in a weird way of saying where Batman was originated from. Sure. And um but just the Batman storytell to me just whatever reason works. Do you know what I mean? I mean he comes from yes, he comes from material wealth, but using that wealth to protect everybody in that city in a way that I think is like very like underappreciated. Do you know what I mean? Like everyone says, Oh, just Bruce Wayne's kind of you know, I mean, he's got the money, he can do whatever he wants. Of course, he's going to, do you know what I mean, be able to create whatever invention, do you know, to protect the city. But he doesn't have to, do you know what I mean? And then getting other people on board based off of how passionate 
he is about protecting Gotham City for others. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, the fact he saves orphans, the fact that he's inspiring other people, like that girl to me is like kind of one of the coolest looking characters I think I've ever seen. I love the Batgirl outfit, the original Batgirl Barbara Gordon outfit before yeah. she became the Oracle. Yeah. More than Batman's outfit for some reason. I just sure. like the black and yellow looks awesome to me. Yeah. And it's 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 an iconic costume. But so I have had such a hard time choosing of uh how to fit, you know, Red Hood and Batman and Batgirl all on the same list. Red Hood I like so much I put him on the list anyway, but the whole Batman family, like Nightwing and Batgirl and spoiler and do you know what I mean? Like Tim Drake, Robin, Damian Wayne's actually likable. I hated him at first, but I grew into liking the character. It's just um, the Gotham City gallery of superheroes is really, really freaking cool. And yep. I put them at number three on my list. That's that's pretty neat. Um, obviously, my my list is Marvel, um, completely. And I was just being honest with with myself you know i didn't i didn't want to put dc on my list just to appease other people like this list was for me but yeah i will admit um i was looking through you know my dc pops and and whatnot and i did if, if i considered any dc superheroes it was batgirl and starfire and those were the only those were the only two contenders Besides maybe Green Lantern, uh, my personal list, but that's just me. But I, I totally get where you're coming from, um, from Batgirl. I mean, Batgirl is one of the coolest Bat characters, for sure. I mean, shoot, dude, she was paralyzed by the Joker, and she still yeah. fought crime as the Oracle. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's. I, I just like the humanization of those characters, because those are the only characters in the DC universe that more have owned their own personal skills and passion for protecting their city without any type of green lantern ring or speed force mm-hmm. or being from another planet or you know being an amazon they're humans banding together to protect the city yep and that's that's to me super cool that's why i said too i could easily see them plug themselves into the universe because gotham's the closest to new york city where it's based in my opinion and now because of all the crime it's like closest to chicago but i mean that's a yeah, other conversation. And, 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 <laughs> and Metropolis is kind of all it is. It's like, oh, these, you know, threats that are coming from outer space, or this billionaire Lex Luthor that just kind of wants to create chaos because he's afraid Superman's going to. And just, it's just, I don't know. There's just no Superman's cool, but there's just not that same appeal. You know what I mean? That that Batman is, as a two, I could easily plug Batman into the universe, and I think it would. Work else in the dc universe i think works in the universe except yeah. batman yeah i mean it's, 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 it's not the same because superman can do anything unless you have a green yeah. rock and then and then he loses and i don't know to me superman's lame i mean some people like him and that's fine you can yeah, like yeah. him that's like rooting for the yankees you know in the 90s right you know they always win yeah. they're like what what fun is that too unbeatable yeah it's just it's just too much for me just personal taste and uh, batman's got a other thing he uses his brain to figure everything out he's a great detective too. yep yep 100 percent. but that's my number three and i said too i said too i feel kind of bad because i kind of did a little bit of cop out on it my want to hear what my b was or no yeah yeah what is it and I had to leave it off the list because I thought it was just a little too not hero, but it's a construct, the Phoenix Force. Okay, interesting. And like the, I really like the Phoenix Force because that's kind of, once again, an early comic experience. We have, like, there's a character named after our city. John Burke is doing the yeah. art on it. Jean Grey is a cool character. Yeah. The Phoenix Force going to Rachel growing up was really cool. It's just, you know, Hope flirting with the Phoenix Force was really cool. It's just, it's really cool to see a force that is of nature that's supposed to be good but can be corrupted it's just uh it was i don't know it's just i said too that was that the, the dilemma i was having with the batman family or phoenix force i kind of decided like let's just go straight forward with batman family yeah you know, I, I get that you know my my wife loves gene gray and, and phoenix and all that so I, I can definitely see the conflict and i i realized personally i like dark phoenix and dark phoenix is a bad guy so i relegated 
I personally relegated Dark Phoenix to my to my bad guy list to make me feel better. So I, yeah, I no, totally sure. get where you're coming from. Uh, is that part of your list? So I took the easy way out and used the Batman. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Lance, what yeah. do you got? <clears throat> I also did an all Marvel list before anyone else says anything else. <laughs> I considered putting in DC characters, but again, I couldn't put like Supergirl over anyone. So, uh, number three, it's a it's a new one. Angela, nice. That's very new. Yes. 2010 I, her, new, I think. Yeah. Her her character and it's just so much fun. It's so interesting. It's such a it, I think I think the biggest thing is it added when she came in, she added a dynamic to a universe that obviously has existed for so long, but it turned out that she's they've been there before at all. Like they've always been there. It's just been hidden away. And it just added so much more depth to other characters, which was interesting. You know, it's like the Asgard, Asgardians and everything with Odin being a jerk as usual. And, and now Thor has a sister um, and she's extremely powerful. And then the whole heaven thing, um, just how the character behaves and about, you know, she's always about, you know, telling people, um, oh my gosh, I'm, I can't, I can't believe I can't think of the verbiage um she's always about owing you know if she saves somebody's life she's like well you owe me for this later i owe you whatever all this fun stuff and she has a great relationship with gamora who's also on my list in the guardians of the galaxy um she's a fun character i I love her she's so cool she's cool that's awesome she's hard not to like she's not she's not my top 10 and i could i didn't feel right about putting her on a list but i i do really enjoy her especially in the marvel stuff having her in the county, she fit right in. It was a great explanation. It worked within the universe without really feeling like a cop out and especially everything that happened. And I know we've talked about this on previous episodes. Angela's a really fun character. She's really powerful. Yeah. I'm excited to see what they continue with her. I've read all of her comics, so exciting. Yeah, dude, she'll be something like that when they integrate her into the MCU. It's going to be pretty epic. I can't imagine her not doing something with her. I hope so. Yeah. All right, Blade. Number two. Number two. I know who my number two is, but I'm pulling it up anyway. My number two. You can probably guess it. <clears throat> I had to do it. I had to do it. This had to be my number two. Um, I have the first appearance. Gosh, the movies are great. Um, the comics are great. Underutilized in the comics, I think, still, even with the movies, you know, like I I recently had the privilege of of going through a, a friend of mine's collection that, that focused a lot on, on Ghost Rider and this character, or a little bit of this character, I guess. And it just made me think, like, man, like, there's, there's not a lot of this character's comics, you know, relatively speaking. Um, but I, I I bought I bought like a whole set of of one of his series, um, and yes, you know it's it's probably a lot of bias, but I I love the character, you know. But my name is Blade. This character's name is Blade. How could I not like a character yeah. named Blade? He's a he's a vampire slayer. He was born half human, half vampire. What a cool freaking concept! Yes, yep. my name is Blade. That's probably what drew me in because what, especially as a kid, I, my first experience was blade was the nineties Spider-Man cartoon and blade showed up and was like, he's like, my name is blade. And I was just like, Whoa, my name is blade. And being, being named blade. I have never had the experience of seeing my name associated with anything outside of a knife outside of that character so you know there was that that instant attraction and like he's half vampire and he struggles with that and he hunts vampires because you know vampires killed his mother like that's it's so cool so tragic um 
you know, I, I have his first appearance. I have a lot of his comics. Wesley Snipes was was a fantastic blade, um, especially for the for the time. I mean, I would argue that his movies, you know, were the reason for the modern superhero movie. You know, as far as as far as those modern movies go, Blade was right before X Men and Spider Man. You know, this this was our soft introduction to superhero movies in the to, to mainstream audiences. Um, and now we have Mahershala Ali um, cast his blade in the MCU, who is just a phenomenal actor. Um, we already saw him in the Luke Cage movies, and I mean uh, Netflix show. It doesn't even matter because he's going to be an even better blade. Um, so excited for that! Such a cool character. Watching him fight Dracula, being involved in the Midnight Suns you know, and, and Ghost Rider and all that, you know, like there's, there's a whole opportunity for the MCU to have a a subsection of the Marvel universe of these characters like Blade, Ghost Rider, Morbius, Johnny Blaze, um, Hannibal King and all of that. I don't, I don't want to call them horror, um, but just involved in, in things like that, you know, with Mephisto and just dealing with some of these darker things, and it, that will help keep the MCU fresh too. Having this subsection there of these characters that still play with the the rest of the the Marvel universe. Yeah, it's going to be nice. Also, that you know, we're I think we're a little far enough removed now from the uh, the Twilights and the uh, True Blood type shows where it's like okay, everyone was super into vampires for a little while, and everyone's kind of sick of vampire stuff. Yeah. I think it's been a good enough time where you can bring them in and it, it won't be like, oh, here's another thing about vampires. Marvel's jumping on the bandwagon of vampire stuff. That's a good point. Didn't even think about that. Absolutely. Yeah, it's like a good timing for it. Refresh your genre. All right, Ken, what's your number two? Oof, man, dude. Okay. This one's like just more a personal favorite of mine. And, uh, as the two is like that, I've always been an Alpha Flight fan, and you guys all know that because I don't know how many other people talk about Alpha Flight as much as I do. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm a really big fan of the character Guardian, and that's actually like another two part um, character Guardian because the, the first Weapon Alpha Vindicator Guardian was James McDonald Hudson. Yeah. But I really feel the better of the two Guardians, his wife, Heather, and because Heather Hudson technically the guardian of her which sounds kind of weird saying that she was like always there to be able to uh do you know what i mean like that look out for the best interest of her husband and alpha flight yeah like that uh not many people know that when alpha flight was disbanded by the canadian government uh guardian james mcdonald hudson the husband wanted to still protect the country even though there was no from the canadian anymore and he went out to try to fight a great beast, which was more or less the villains of Canada. They kind of, John Byrne, the creator of Alpha Flight or co-creator with Chris Claremont, um, made the villains of Canada based off of Canadian mythology, which was really freaking kind of cool because I knew nothing about Canadian mythology until reading Alpha Flight. But not later doing research, I mean, they were looking at true canadian urban legends making yeah. those of alpha which was really freaking cool but um james hudson mcdonald hudson went to fight something that was called tundra which was a beast of the earth and it could manifest itself and attack different you know what what it thought was you know something worthy while to, to dominate to, to 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 take over and guardian went out by himself to try to take on tundra and heather hudson like said like okay you know what even though alpha flights disbanded my husband needs a team and so she put out the beacons that were less radio like radio frequency beacons that had transmitters that every member of alpha flight could get to reunite the team and go help save her husband from being defeated by tundra and alpha flight was so kind of cool to see that um, she was always the true leader of Alpha 
the whole time along. And it's kind of like, not only is it a cool name to protect the country, but it's about relationships, not just being a superhero. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And after her husband died, she took on that mantle because not only was she trying to do to protect the country, but she was keeping the legacy of her husband alive too. That, you know, be married to a wife on a comic shop. And she's kind of like my Heather Hudson. And I kind of sometimes feel like that guardians together, what we do in life. And so it's kind of, kind of fun. I like always affectionate towards that. Kind of thing. And so it's like, that. It's kind of ironic to see like how characters you liked as a kid can sometimes influence your reality as yeah. a adult too it's yeah. kind of can relate very much so to the hudson family and our own family that's really fun i was i was wondering you when guys we were, are when we were all members of our what? <laughs> what and you guys are all members of our alpha oh <laughs> dibs on dibs on sasquatch because <laughs> <Yeah. I'm> a- <laughs> i just don't want to be i said i don't want to be puck <laughs> Yeah, it's I'll be honest, honest, I can't think of anyone else. Well, <laughs> North Star and, and, and Aurora. North Star. All kinds of, but uh, yeah. Dude, I, so, almost, but, I almost expected half of your list to, to be Alpha Flight. I wasn't yeah, sure where you were going to was. It was considered. That. Yeah. Yeah, it was considered. Mostly it's, it's Guardian and Heather Hudson. I like Shaman and Talesman. That's another cool thing, too. The father, father-daughter relationship. Yeah. That's trying to be rebuilt. Do you know what I mean? It's a, uh, you know, no. Go ahead. It's funny that your number two is like uh, trying to like fill fulfill a legacy of another because that's my number two. Really, that's cool. Oh, that weird. Yeah, what's your yours? Black cat. Nice. That's right? another father daughter. Why not Riri? Re- why not Riri? Re- yeah. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> That's not, that's just stupidity. That's not a relationship. Um, but yeah, I mean, Black Cat, can you get, you know, she, again, relationship with my number 10 character, Spider Man, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, she brought the, to be the best out of in Spider Man. Mm-hmm. You know, she, yes. her, her comic was, was cool. It was fun. She was like the, the crazy ex girlfriend, you know, um, or girlfriend, period. Um, she was just she's a fun character. Her whole relationship with her father and, and trying to be like him and her him not wanting her to to really become what he is, but she went out and did it anyway. Um, and they, again, they started developing her character over the years. She's starting to become a little more powerful, which is interesting. And there's going to be nothing cooler to see her on the big screen. It's going to be awesome. Uh, as long as they do can't it, wait right. for that. Like, yeah, it's like Black Cat, man. Still my favorite relationship for Spider-Man to this day. 100%. I mean, everyone's a big Mary Jane fan, but Black Cat, I, I said too, I think she matured Spider-Man when it came to relationships. Made him decide, do you know what I mean? How to have fun with relationship, not take it so seriously. Like life, it's one thing about Spider-Man. I'll, 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 I'll let you talk. I apologize, dude. It's just Black Cat is, she was like, she's one of those ones I kind of wanted to put on my list too, but I knew you would put on your list. And then <laughs> I was wondering, yeah, yeah. I was wondering if she was going to make your list. <laughs> yeah. It was, I said too, she's, she's one of my top three favorite female super, super characters. And, and I still think of her as a superhero rather than a villain, but. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, man. that's, well. the, you know, it's funny that I think about it. a lot of my characters are kind of like, well, some of my characters kind of intermingle on both, you know, yep. like Gamora kind of was a little bit of a bad guy and uh, Silver Surfer's oh, multi, I mean, he's a herald for someone who destroys, you know, universes, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, both on the Brotherhood, right? I, it's kind of crazy that a lot of my list is, is good guy, bad guy kind of uh, dynamic, but, you know, I think there's, there's, it makes a character more interesting because a lot of times those characters you can kind of see what they're they're dealing chance or they're dealing with something right they're not just they're not just righteous because they're so righteous and you know oh i'm i'm captain america so like i'm always oh right? okay <laughs> okay now it's captain america 
Okay, wait, I'm sorry. Is he on any of our top ten lists? Exactly, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Not even an honorable mention. That's what I thought. Anyway. Yeah. Just the right side of Civil War. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. I think we covered it with Black Hat, right? Well, you, you, like, you get invested in these characters. I mean, you right. can read and you say like that how would I deal with the same thing they're dealing with and you can relate more with that than you know I mean the Steve Rogers story yeah it's great he started off as like someone that wasn't worthy enough to be in the military but wanted so badly to protect the country he would do anything including taking the first steroid cocktail in American mm-hmm. history yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. he is like that he is the epitome of of honor and protecting your country and everything that it means to be a great soldier. But, um, he, you know, he doesn't struggle with a whole lot, you know, and after he became Captain America, it almost like that his life became too perfect. And, you know, with some of the other superheroes like black cat, even with her bad luck serum, she still has to struggle with things to, decide you know which side of the fence she's going to dance on is she going to be the world's best cat burglar or is she going to you know continue to try to use her knowledge of Mm -hmm. cat burglary to stop others do you know what i mean it's kind of that it's it's that devil's advocate you know i can do what i can do but what choices do i make that are right and which ones are not no captain america never never struggles he always knows it's right. It's like, this yeah. is what's wrong. This is what's right. There is no gray with Captain America. You know, even when he was conflicting with the government, he became the U.S. agent. Not the U.S. agent, just the captain. The U.S. agent was John Walker at the time. It's like, yeah, like he was no not man. happy with what the government was, but looking at what's right for America. Yeah. And this government's corrupt. How do I deal with this? Yeah. No, Black, Black Hat's a really cool character. You know, I, I recently saw some some panel somebody posted on on Instagram and I and I was reading through them and I, I guess um she she broke into the Sanctum Santorum and stole like the, the hand of the Vashanti or, or something like that. And she was doing yeah. something with it and then Doctor Strange rolled up on her and was like, you, you gotta give this back. Like just just stop it. And she was like, Okay. And so she gives it to him and he goes to go away and was like this is a fake. <laughs> and it turned out to be to be a fake because she wanted to help save Spider Man with him. And and she ended up getting her way. And she she went with Doctor Strange to go save Spider Man. But but Doctor Strange was like, You better never break into my sanctum again or you know, or you're gonna regret it, essentially, in a yeah. in a nutshell. But I mean with you know, I mean, she has powers, but I mean, she was even able to be cunning to people as powerful as Doctor Strange, you know, and I think that says a lot. I think, I think she might be able to take him out. That's, that's interesting. I don't know if I'd say one way or another, but I will say we had a lot of false starts in the Sony movies. And I, I really hope we get a proper interpretation because I mean... There was like the new interpretation's great. I just hope the we get some movie thing because she's awesome. Her her probability control basically controls magic is kind of cool. Yeah, that's what you, I could see your point. Her being able to take out Doctor Strange because you know nothing works against her against her favor. Does that make sense? I guess am I saying that right? Yeah, that anything she can to her favor. And that's then it's just based off of her abilities, right? If I remember right. correctly. Well, if there's bad luck, he could that could make him screw up, right? Yeah, right. But also, it, when whenever there in the recent comics, whenever there was magic used against her, there was an they were explaining that magic was just a probability that's being created, and since she has the prob the possibility of making the probability bad, whenever something was happening. She was like, she would go get hit by this thing that was like magical, and it would just turn into butterflies when it hit her, and she's like, oh, and she just like just destroyed it. And this was in Doctor yeah. Strange's Sanctum when this wow. was happening too. So, wow, like she, interesting. They've developed her character a lot. So much fun. But Blade, 
Yeah. Drum roll. This is so it. Is your number one. This is it. We all know who. I, I know. know. If you listened, if you've listened to Nightcap Chat, even a fair amount, you can probably figure out all three of our number ones. I, I'm willing to bet on that. And I didn't even want my number one to be my number one. I didn't. I didn't want this to happen, but <laughs> I. I just. I just had to do it just because I was thinking of it in terms of of all time. If I if I did it right now, Dazzler would have been my number one. Dazzler is my number one right now. Um, but this kind of like what what Ken was saying about Harlequin was like the characters became too popular, and the way this character has developed in in recent years, it wasn't good. It was it was bad, and uh, I'd even go as far as saying he's been developed in a really stupid way, and it's it's a it's a joke, you know. Quite frankly, I I, I don't really buy the modern comics at all, and I don't really care for them, and I don't buy. You don't them. like him as being king of Monster Island? Nope, I don't like any of it. I don't like I don't like the the pirate action figures or the mermaid. Funko Pops or the Wizard Funko Pop or whatever the 30 variants for no reason that they made. And if you haven't figured it out by now, I am referring to Deadpool. And I got into Deadpool because of the, the Joe Kelly run in 97, 98. And Deadpool was funny, but he himself was was not a joke. He was not he was not fighting asparagus aliens from outer space you know like he still worked as part of the marvel universe you know like and there was a very there's a very shakespeare shakespearean story to it you know you know wade wilson was was dying of cancer he joined the the weapon the weapon x program and they they spliced him with with wolverine's dna you know and he got he got a bit mutilated in the process he he went into the weapon x hospice um which which the deadpool movie i will say did a great job on on touching upon the the whole story on being in the weapon x hospice and the story with francis i mean they skipped the stuff with dr kilbrew and they kind of combined that character in francis's character but he also had a love story with death who i i had to put in my honorable mentions for for reasons like this but I mean, death became so infatuated with Wade Wilson. Um, he was just, I mean, if you know what Deadpool looks like, he looks like, like his face looks like hamburger meat. He's all, he's all messed up, you know, in the comics, they said he had a hamburgeritis, you know, yeah. um, but she would like, she was like literally seducing him into killing himself so they could be together forever. You know, and if that's not Shakespeare, you know, I don't, I don't know what is, uh, but in his lust for revenge against uh, the attending or Francis or Ajax or whatever you want to call him, um, it, it kickstarted the, the healing factor from Wolverine that they spliced into him and he, it essentially made him immortal and he was not able to die after that whole revenge story and just tragically he's just he's just stuck as this ugly you know guy you know with just his sense of humor to to get him by and it's it's a real shame that that marvel didn't realize what they they really had and they've made him such into a joke and a parody it's it's a shame you know because after that that Deadpool run, that cable Deadpool run in 2003, 4 or 5 or whatever year it was, there really hasn't been um, any good Deadpool comics. And I'm absolutely fine. I stand by that statement. I don't care if you like it. That's fine. But that's not my Deadpool. That's not why I got into the Deadpool. Deadpool still fits within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And regardless of whether or not he breaks the fourth wall, it's the fact that... He's so crazy, he thinks he's breaking the fourth wall, and it still works to, you know, amongst all the other characters that they're they're looking at him like, wow, this guy's out of his mind. You know, it should work on on those levels. You guys know what I mean? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I do it. 
So begrudgingly, uh, Deadpool is my number one. I'll take that. So Deadpool is, I know he's been your fan favorite for years. And it's hard when you see a character that you're so revere kind of just become the comedy relief of the whole universe. And yeah. yeah, part of his characters is comedy, but you know, it's like that comedy was designed to be there at first to kind of pay homage to Spider-Man's comedy quips of him mm-hmm. during battle to use it as a weapon. Mm-hmm. Do you think? Because Spider-Man uses his comedy, which kind of segues into my favorite is Spider-Man. Because like that uh, Deadpool, the comedy side of Deadpool supposed to pay homage to bringing the comedy level that Spider-Man brought to the character during mm-hmm. battle to a whole new level as a form of distraction of you know, like, hey, I know what I'm thinking, but if I can get you to think about things that help give me the advantage, that's why I use comedy, if I'm correct, right? With Deadpool as well, the original inclination of his comedy. Yeah, I mean, it's it was a little bit of like he was so crazy, you know, that's what that's what happened. I mean, but there there, there was definitely that joke, too. you know. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, you're right. It is a coping mechanism. And I would argue mm-hmm. that's the same for, for Spider-Man as well. And there, yes. there were even those jokes that, Deadpool's costume looked like Spider-Man's. You know, there were a lot yeah. of those jokes within those comics. But I mean, Spider-Man is a tragic character. You know, like he's yeah. dealt with being irresponsible and Uncle Ben dying, right? So there, there is that coping, coping mechanism aspect to Spider-Man as well. Yeah, it's like uh, Spider-Man is. Uh, it's, it's you know, it's a. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a typical choice, but it's so easy of a choice for me for Spider-Man being my favorite character. Yeah. And it goes back to, I said too, it was like that, uh, you know, Spider-Man's Amazing Friends it was just a fun scene, Spider-Man, Firestar, and Iceman together at the cartoon. Yeah. And then, you know, picking up the comic because I saw the black suit, which is goes back to my number, you know, seven on the symbiote mm-hmm. is what brought me into the comic book world of Spider-Man. And I really got to see that this guy is not just fun like he was in the cartoon. He, there was tragedy in his life too. I mean, they didn't really talk too much about the Uncle Ben dying in the Spider-Man's Amazing Friends cartoon. It was just, you know, he lived with his aunt. He didn't know where his parents were. Him, Firestar, and Iceman were just all buddies, hung out and fought crime in New York City. And uh, when you start getting into the comics, you see like, oh my gosh, dude, like that you start realizing, yeah, dude, it's uh, do you know what I mean? Spider-Man is tortured every day about the fact that he, his ego got his uncle killed. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like that him not stopping the burglar after doing something for his own, do you know what I mean? Financial gain of wrestling Spider-Man powers and winning matches, you know, getting the payout, not getting what he expected to get paid. And so he decided not to help out his, by not, Helping out his promoter, it ended up costing his uncle. Yeah. And every freaking day, he almost like Batman and Bruce Wayne and Crime Alley. And it's like, how did, you know, there was pure coincidence of how life turned out. But to turn that into something where it's never going to happen to anybody else again is just, uh, you know, um, it's just Spider Man's as human as it gets when it comes to an alter ego that people can relate to growing up peter parker you know what i mean it's just it's 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 it's, it's a two-faceted superhero that just works so perfect for society and making the right decision and thinking about what you're doing before you actually do it and wow. we know with great power comes great responsibility how do you treat others how is what happens in your decision making going to impact others and that's always something like super kind of uh, important and life in general to me and so spider-man's just an easy easy pick i mean so much fun with adventures like i said too his relationships are you know so diversely different it's not like the superman gets stuck with slain all these years and that's just how life works do you know what i mean <laughs> they they kind of hinted on wonder Woman with superman but spider-man's had betty brant you know gwen stacy mary jane black cat <laughs> carly <laughs> do you know what i mean it's like that's yeah. Peter Parker goes through what most people go through, but he's Spider-Man. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And struggles with finances. I mean, just like Rent. sometimes like, like underachieving, overachieving, mm-hmm. you know, it's like that. Oh, he did like, he's one of the most kids in the class, but he never finished college. 
point, you know, it's just, yeah, it just, it was just a college dropout, college restarting, you know, it was just uh, having to deal with the fact that Dr. Octopus, when he was Spider-Man, finished his master's form, but then he was called a cheater because it was Dr. Octopus' thesis that he used to get that master's. Mm-hmm. It's just like, even to this day, Peter Parker has everyday things as much as he wants to do everything right he's got to deal with the fallout of what happens around him. J. Jonah Jameson always torture him inside the press I mean there's so many things that he has to overcome and he never gives up trying to help out others so it's just a very just a surreal not only just superhero but almost a role model for people as comic book readers I mean Spider-Man was you know created by stan lee you know one of those first super relatable you know characters you know like absolutely you know like i'm i'm a kid in the school you know Mm -hmm. and you know it kind of just it kind of jumped from there and that's you know that was just part of the the genius that was stan lee who created so many of the characters that we know and love and, and the whole reason for you know, Marvel, quite frankly, you know, yes. um, that was his home run. I mean, yeah. hands down. I mean, even yeah. the Spider-Man family, like talk about the Batman family. I mean, I like Miles Morales. You know, I think that's the future of Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. It's like that, how Miles Morales kind of took that whole new level with a brand new fan base. Mm-hmm. And yet you don't have any, you know, kind of like, Oh, you know, what rivalry between Peter Parker and Miles Morales. How often does that happen? Mm-hmm. when you know, it's like oh i don't like dick grayson as batman you know type of thing and it's like oh i want bruce wayne to be batman again you know it's like miles morales dude it's like that who can say like i don't like miles morales as far i think that was a horrible idea to make miles morales spider-man and it gets not taken away from peter parker being spider-man I mean, it's just like it is it, it fits like the spider-man family and the batman family i find very similar now like that they kind of feel like they did the batman family type of thing with spider-man with the spider-verse but it it's spider-man done do you know what i mean it fits mm-hmm. inside of spider-man storytelling they didn't ruin it by trying to do like a similar type of thing that there's a batman family why don't we have a spider-man family that kind of you know plays on the same morality that spider-man plays off of. it's just a, just it's just i don't know it's my favorite hands down yeah i totally agree and w- one more thing i wanted to mention um, before before Lance does his number one, as I said, there hasn't been a good, you know, Deadpool comic since the, the cable and Deadpool, but um, 2010, 2011, 2012, somewhere around there, when they all had their gray suits and we had, you know, X Force yeah. as, as Deadpool, Wolverine, I want to say Psylocke, Angel. Um, he did a great job of, of writing the character and, and it wasn't a joke. Um, and he kind of put the rest of them in their place because in their first story arc, they were going to go assassinate. They were going somewhere to assassinate Apocalypse, but Apocalypse was a little kid. A Rick Reminder story. The That X-Force stuff um, with the, the gray suit, Deadpool, Wolverine, Angel, Psylocke. Mm-hmm. And they did a great job with that. And after, you know, Phantom X killed young... Um, this young reincarnation of apocalypse, you know, they were all kind of struggling with that because it was just a kid, you know, and you know, Deadpool was the one who said like, well, you know, I'm not the one who killed a kid and like walked away from them at one point. And, you know, Deadpool was this kind of beacon of morality amongst all these other characters, which is kind of crazy to think about. But then, you know, um, I think it was Angel who is bankrolling this and, you know, he's like, you know, Deadpool Wade has not even been really taking a paycheck. He hasn't cashed any of the checks, you know, at this point, you know, and he was just, he was brilliantly written. And I wish more authors would see Deadpool that way because just, yeah. just been such a joke. Yeah, I said too. That was a really good story. I remember that Rick Reminder just, I think he, it was fun seeing his different take on Deadpool. Mm hmm. They were exactly right. He was more altruistic. It's like, hey, dude, you guys think I'm fucked up? I'm not trying to kill any kids. Yep. Yep. You know what I mean? yep. Yeah, that was that was great. And I, and I took love that Sp- first one. I love Spider Man. You know, made this list. You know, like I mean, 
at some point, how is Spider-Man not on someone's list? You know, like I, I remember when he's I was on a two kid. List. Yeah, I mean, he's he's on your list. Uh, he didn't he didn't make mine. I definitely considered him, but I definitely at some point, I will admit, like Spider-Man was my favorite superhero of all time for for sure. But that's just because of how you know relatable Spider-Man is. You know, I think. All right, Lance, close us out with your number one. You guys will never guess it. I'm. I don't even know what you're gonna say. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, it's pretty Can't obvious, possibly right? Possibly be tattooed, tattooed on you, <laughs> right? Um, number one's obviously the man who has everything and nothing, Iron Man. I mean, unfortunately, he's super popular, like Deadpool, so everybody loves him. Now, Robert Downey Jr. Now, yes, Robert Downey Jr. did an amazing job to really bring him to life and captivate the character that most people know and love. Um, you know what a interesting character. You know, when I, when I was a little kid, I loved him because of the armor. That's literally the only reason. This guy is rich and he has like cool shiny armor. He flies yeah. around shooting bullets out of his hand, and he has yeah. a he has a teammate named War Machine, which what a <laughs> BA name shooting yes. a machine gun out of his shoulder. Like, this is so cool. And then, you know, you start growing up and realizing, oh, you know, he's this rich guy, but he doesn't really have a family. And he has a drinking problem and a partying problem. And he uses it to, you know, cope with, you know, the fact that he doesn't have anyone. It's just, it's just a good character. And, and yeah. it's kind of weird because. I, I don't know if it's because I liked the character as a kid and then he kind of grew on me because like usually that type of a character wouldn't be like my cup of tea, like how he, how he acts, behaves, because I don't do that. You know, I don't go out partying or drinking or anything. I'm, I'm, I'm like completely opposite. Um, but I don't know, just something about the character that I always loved. And it's just cool. And, and some, of the, some of the newer stuff, I'm not really a fan of. Stop reading a lot of it. I'm hoping with the new reboot, <clears throat> it'll come back to, you know, being like, you know, Iron Man again, like Tony Stark, I mean, not some nonsense. Um, but yeah, what can you say? I am Iron Man. Man, <laughs> I love it. The, the amount of tragedy in our number ones, like we, the, the most interesting I think about our lists is is the correlations between where Every certain number. characters <laughs> fell, like between number one, I don't know, what, what were the other numbers? Like Number three two? And... No, number two, my black cat was 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 making up, was uh, trying to live her live her dad's life through through her. And... Yeah, but Blade wasn't doing that, you know? No. But Blade was struck. Blade was struggling. But well, I guess, his, was. I guess his father was a vampire. Mm -hmm. There yes. was... There were a lot of interesting correlations in our numbers, and especially number one with the uh, with these tragedies, right. you know. And I would even argue that little bit of humor versus the tragedies, because I mean, Iron Man may not be like Deadpool or Spider Man, but no, but he's. he's I mean, but there's sarcastic. There's those funny. quips, and especially with with Robert Downey Jr. Iron Man, like it's. It's really hard to, uh, to argue against it. So, like, man, that's that's interesting. Mm -hmm. And I'm not gonna. And again, like like you guys were saying, like who's who's your Kurt number one? Honestly, he was my number two, but I couldn't put him because we're doing all time, so he had to be number one. But right yeah. now, Black Cat's my number one mm -hmm. as of this moment. But yeah. he's still my number one for all time plus. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, dude, such such a hard book to put together because my initial like my first one is bold at the top of the page says guardian then i started putting down like a list whatever reason guardian always comes up first in my ideas even though i don't always rank him number one yeah but like spider-man's just two two hands down i've just enjoyed too many spider-man stuff yeah you know what i mean i, I admit dude this is going to be like a, a guilty uh, admission <laughs> but there was a point i got bored with alpha flight after that guardian character was not being the focus of the anymore. Yeah. 
And it was kind of like that the original writer, John Byrne, had such a great plan. And then the other writers took it to different directions that they liked. But it kind of like, dude, you're missing the whole point of this team is, you know, based off of the tragedy and the relationship that the leaders had, a guardian and vindicator. Mm-hmm. It was just, that was, that's what Alpha Flight was about. It was yeah. overcoming and started getting more to, you know, off the rails. It's like, it was harder for me to read. That's why I went with Spider Man being number one stuff. How fun. What an interesting list. You know, we, this was hard. And I, I challenge all of our listeners to, to sit down and, and make a, make a top 10 list and, and share with us on, uh, on Facebook, Instagram, or, or Twitter. That's and nightcap chat on uh, Facebook and Twitter <clears throat> and nightcap underscore chat on Instagram. Um, I would say like, if we took all three of our number two, that's a pretty badass team, dude. Spider-Man, Iron Man, and Deadpool. Uh-huh. Is there a better top three type of combination of characters you can put together? That's uh, that would be a fun like story. A team? Yeah, they would get really annoyed with each other really fast. Yeah. <laughs> Iron Man would, would just be so annoyed by the whole story. <laughs> <laughs> like Spider Man, I think would just be like, "Oh wow, Deadpool's kind of weird," you know, like uh, and like awkward. Deadpool would just be annoying. And Iron Man would just be like, There's "Over no way it. I'm dealing with this." Yeah. With that would Spider-Man, be really fun. Iron Man got like a good like big brother, little brother relationship that maybe like you know Peter keep on telling Tony to just deal with him. I got him because I've, te- I've dealt with teaming up with him so many times. And yeah. I, he's annoyed the heck out of me too. But as an asset, this guy gets it, man. We just gotta you know just trust me on this. One. Deadpool would just ruin it's everything because it yeah. would it would work. But Deadpool <laughs> would just ruin everything if he's written he's correctly. He'd, he'd, he'd make things so much harder than they need to be. Yeah, yeah, and it would be fun. Mm-hmm. And you know he might get his mouth blown off by Iron Man's repulsors once or twice. <laughs> like, you know, then Tony would think that's great because it's like this is cool, dude. You'll keep on healing up. I just shut him up when I need. <laughs> What's also interesting is their their main costume color scheme is red. Yeah, <laughs> that's got gold, yeah. gold, blue, and black. Right. I'm sure Deadpool would mention that. Yeah. Like, we're all <laughs> exactly, red. Dude. It's it's interesting. Has Iron Man and Deadpool like ever like really had any interactions? Not really too much. No, just in the Avengers. No, was he wasn't in Uncanny Avengers, was he Iron Man? Was Iron no. Man? Yeah, I don't think he was. I only have a couple of those issues and I, I honestly never opened them. I have no yeah. idea. Um as far as anything significant, I, I haven't noticed anything. Hmm. That would be kind of a fun story. Let's see how Tony Stark would deal with Deadpool. There there might be one. But it's definitely not significant. I would yeah. argue anyway. Yeah. Gosh, what a fun list. And I can't wait to do this again. Because yes. there are so many nightcap chat lists to, to be had. Villains, comic book characters. We got movies, we got video games still. But this was this was a fun way to, to close out November and start December. Um, Absolutely. But like I said bring bring those lists out to us you know let us know your top 10 lists and i and i i challenge you to put those lists together because you you'll get to see the struggle that we had um because we we almost did this a few times and then we just we just didn't um and i and i think that impacted all of our lists because we've had several weeks to kind of passively think about this at the at the very least um but thank you so much for listening. We hope your Thanksgiving was wonderful. Drop those top 10 lists on Instagram and Twitter at ICAP chat and ICAP underscore chat on Instagram. Did I say Facebook and Twitter on the first one? No, I don't even know. I'm just about back at this point. Ken? Yeah, dude, thanks again for listening, guys. This is a, another fun night podcasting you guys, dude. Thank you for always including me part of it and uh, yeah, drawn to comics uh, in downtown Glendale, Arizona. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. So too, we're doing the holiday daily deal sales we mentioned in the last podcast. Definitely keep an eye out for them, and I greatly appreciate all of you guys' support. And you can catch me on Twitch at Tales of Lance and on Instagram and Twitter at Tales of Lance. It's been fun doing this list. Yes. For all for all you guys who watch my stream, 
two weeks ago, you knew that this list was coming because I said, hey, just so you guys know, we're doing a list. And I was given a little leak, make it fun. So I'll leak the next time we do a list too. I'm glad you can't stop me. I can't stop you. <laughs> but thank you all for listening. We love you. Be safe. And we will catch you all next week. Thank you, everyone. Have a good week.